Hello, everyone. Welcome to our CD Shenet. I'm Ella Huang. We have been sharing a few stories on parenthood and disability, and today I'm going to bring you the story of George. That's a little bit unique about the situation with George because we're going to talk about a family with multiple members with disabilities. George had a stroke at the age of 22, and his life was not the same anymore. Even after several months of rehab and recovering from the stroke, he was mostly paralyzed on the left side of his body. Since then, he has been using a wheelchair for mobility purpose. He also has no peripheral vision on the left side of both his eyes. That's why he's not driving anymore. Yet he stays positive with a lot of things in his life. In his own words, as he said, always, my speech and cognitive functions are still intact. A big change happened in George's lives when he turned 39, he got married. And one year later, the family had grown to four members, father, mother, daughter, and a newborn boy. George started to experience parenthood and found that family life and children are a comfort to his life. When his son was in grade one, the school noticed some social challenges with this young boy. It took several years to go through the assessment. And at around the age of eight, his son was diagnosed with ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder. George said, if not for the prompting by the school, he would only consider his son to be socially difficult and would not have any test or assessment done for him. Nonetheless, the late diagnose did bring some light to the picture. Now he understands better the barriers faced by his son and also explained some of his behaviors. Very soon, George came to the realization that his stepdaughter might have some similar challenges, but she was already over the age of being properly diagnosed, assessed, and he learned a new term, undiagnosed ASD, as the condition like for his daughter is not properly diagnosed. Moreover, George also saw some shades of ASD traits with his wife. All of a sudden, this family of four members have become a family of multiple members with disabilities, including a wide range of physical and sensory disabilities, neurodiversity, some diagnosed and some undiagnosed. Watching his son growing up, George actually saw a lot of himself in his son's life journey. Consequently, he was able to understand and empathize with his son better. He believes in pushing through the disability not to give up. To him, barriers are short term, can be resolved and overcome. He also believes that his own lived experience of having a disability may have prepared him for the parenthood with a child with disability. George mentioned about the different perspectives of parenthood with his wife in having children with disabilities. He describes them as fighting versus accepting, understanding versus protecting. But interestingly, he finds no conflict with the different viewpoints. In his own words, he said, open communication 
does take the edges off himself and his wife. George describes his family as a family of four different individuals finding comfort, balance, and contentment with each other. When being asked if he has any regrets, he said, "Of course, I prefer we don't have any disability, which may or may not be the cause of our bonding. Yet having a family together is priceless." We may not be your typical family because we sometimes do things differently to accommodate our disabilities. Nonetheless, we valued and love each other. That is most important to us. This brings us to the end of George sharing, and the, in the second part of the session, we're very happy to have him coming to meet with you in person via Zoom. And uh, we're going to uh, have him to share some of his uh, ideas, feelings, thoughts with you directly. Hello, welcome back to the second part of Parenthood and Disability in RCD Shenet. Uh, to follow with the story of George, now we have him with pleasure in person on Zoom to meet with you and share more of his thoughts and feelings. Hello, George. How are you today? Pretty good, Ella. Thank you. And, and welcome, welcome to ShareNet, and thank you for coming on the video. My pleasure. Okay, so I've already shared, you know, the the key points of uh, the the story of your family of four members. So now I want to have, uh, you know, in real person to hear from you a little bit of your thought and what you can share with us. Okay, so we'll go ahead with the first question. What was the first thought that you had when you knew that you are going to be a parent? So that was quite some years ago, right? I hope you remember how you felt uh, then. Thirteen years ago, yeah, it was. It was. Uh, I found out February. I was very like happy, like that was my first thought. Yay! Of course, right? You know, like yeah. so. When you got married, you actually your your uh, wife has uh, a daughter already. So you you have a stepdaughter, and then your son. Came along, you know, one but year after her daughter marriage. was her daughter wasn't here yet though. We brought her later to help out during the pregnancy and uh, early years. And she's been she stayed she's part of the family now, but the household mm -hmm. now, of course. But at that time, you already you know like you experienced uh, you know like over a decade of your life with disabilities. How so exactly how how you felt? Were you were you um, were you feeling uncertain? You know, to become a father. Uh. Little bit. I was more worried about the uh, early stuff, you know, like you know, get up the baby, feeding the baby, changing the diaper, and picking up the child and stuff like that. So I was worried about that because with only one hand, I don't really have that much of an option, you know. Mm -hmm. I, in the house, I, I don't use. I walk around the house, so I'm not really low down where the, where the baby's going to be on the floor when we get older. Yeah. So I was uh, a little, a little nervous about that, but then I realized my wife's perfectly able-bodied. She, she, she can do all that I can't do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we've done since the day we got married between the two of us we get everything done no well, we're partners it's got to be a partnership otherwise it's not going to happen for anybody okay. i don't care if you're disabled or not if you're not you're not having a good partnership it's not time for a baby <laughs> yeah totally you know i'm glad that you know you have a, a good partner in life than uh to help you with raising your your son oh me too believe me. <laughs> Okay, yeah, and thank you, George. And it brings us to the second question. So, with a disability, you know, like, and, and you actually answered some of that already, is uh, do you need to make any uh, adjustment in supporting your child, you know, your son, as well as the other family members? Well, mostly, uh, so I've had, I had concerns about this growing up, and I've seen it with a lot of people, is I was most concerned because I do everything one handed by necessity. And I didn't want him watching me too much and, uh, you know, what do you call it, uh, you know, matching to me too much. Yeah, trying then, to copy, right? Yeah, I want, you know, I, so that, I didn't want that happening too much because then he's going to just imitate what he sees and only use one hand. I've seen this happen out there before. Mm. I didn't want that. I wanted him to have full capability, of course, physically. And yeah. so I had to make sure, I mean, he learned very, very, very young that, uh, I have a disability and I'm paralyzed on one side. 
talked about very early. He asks some questions. He likes to ask questions, and I explain every details, and he needs the details, so I give them to him. And so he knows that everybody else has got two hands working, two arms and hands working fine, but Daddy's got one arm that doesn't work because he's got he's he had a stroke and he's paralyzed. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I'll tell him, you know, when I tell him, okay, here's how I do it. Now I'll have your mom or your sister show you how, show you how you can do it mm-hmm. for things so, when it comes up. Yeah. Did you encourage him to ask questions about your disability and to express? Oh, but everything. Um, yeah. I, I I wanted to ask questions. That's the way I was raised. Always, always ask a question. You know. So that's very you, open you communication. Be, you, you can't be worse off than you are if you if you don't if you ask the question. No matter what the answer is, you can't be worse off than you were. You can only gain information or get a yes for what you're asking for. You can't you can't be worse than you were. You just stay where you are. That's so very good no, point. No fear of question, asking questions anytime. That's what I wanted it, and that's been very helpful. Mm-hmm. So it seems all worked out quite well for you and your wife. So, but when you think back, or you're currently, you know, in the uh, a parent being parents to uh, you know um, uh, to a son and a and a daughter. So, what what is or was the biggest challenge you experience? Uh, in the journey of parenthood. Well, mainly when you got to be, uh, you know, let's say terrific twos around that age, when you started getting more mobile, getting into things. So I see him getting anything. I can't just reach over there and grab him. <laughs> I can't just, you know, I can't just run over and grab him real quick to stop him from doing something. So I had to make good use of my da- my dad voice. Mm. You know, a good sharp no. You know, with carried with the right amount of, you know, tenor. You know, it just it just get get his attention. To, You know, <laughs> so that's so, what I had to do, and then of course, <laughs> either my wife or my daughter would realize something's up, and they come check it out. And mm-hmm. If he if he still continued, usually he didn't. He understood. It was under, pretty soon he realized that when I do that, I can't stop him. So the cheeky kid was keep trying to do it because hey, not the one stopping me. But he knew it would only be a uh, like seconds later before mom or sister would grab, him. Oh, and oh. then he's gonna then he's gonna get some kind of uh you know something. He's going to use someone discipline for doing that, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much a collective effort from all the family members to sure, support and look after him, right? Got to be, got to be a partnership. And uh, my wife and my wife and I, and uh, we, her, we brought her daughter in. You know, she's been a great help. I mean, I mean, she's family too, so it's not a, not like she's hired a, you know, au pair or something. She is family. Yes. So, um, have you talked about your son's uh, condition with him? Uh, some he understands. He understands that he's on the autism spectrum, in the Asperger's uh, range. He understands. He understands also how it affects him socially, and, and he knows sometimes he has to make extra efforts to understand things from a different, a different angle than he would do it naturally. To put the extra effort in to uh, understand what people are feeling and, and the meaning. Mm-hmm. And and if he is not sure, ask questions. He's yet he's learning that. This is what I encourage at all times: learn, ask questions, improve what you know. You yes. can't go wrong. You don't you can't go wrong learning. <laughs> that was my philosophy growing up, and I, I still is. And I want that. I wanted that for him, and it's taken hold. Yeah, he understands it, and uh, he discusses it. Uh, he know he knows that he can't just sit there and blame everything, blame behaviors on it. But it's yes. all we know. He knows he has choices. That's right. That's he right. has tendencies, but he has to he has to make the choice whether to follow the tendency mm-hmm. or to do what he knows is right. And he's learning. That's that's good job. I think you know coming. It's easier because I also am on the autism spectrum, so I, I mean I'm not talking to him top down. I'm coming I'm talking to him like, hey, I understand it because I I I live it. Mm-hmm. And I tell him what I've learned over the years and how I've solved some problems. I don't do too bad socially. I don't believe. And I think that would bring a different perspective of disabilities on him as well, right? Seeing you, um, you know, doing well, and then being a father and everything else, and having a disability for a long time, and he uh, has the condition. So you know, like that impact on him must be quite. Um, it 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 is not easy, but it also brings a positive side to it. Well, exactly. I work. I, uh, I I do. I help out. I do chores. I I'm participate in the family. And my, you know, I'm a dad. I'm a dad and a husband. And 
and a member of the family, member of the household, because everybody in the household contributes in some way. That's, that's how, how we operate. That's yes, excellent. And uh, when he's going to school, learning, that's his key job. He has mm-hmm. to focus on learning and doing well. Yeah. Doing the best we can. That's totally and, uh, right. His sister's job is helping us. And uh, mm-hmm. right now, she went to school for a while, but she's finished and now she helps us. And he understands that everybody contributes. So that he, and and, and just, he doesn't, you know, like, I never use disability as an excuse. And mm. I don't expect them to either. So disability or not, I believe, right? I don't believe in excuses. It's, it's, yes. You always have a choice. There's always yes. another way to do. Always another way to do things. <laughs> That's absolutely true. Disability or not, you're still a member of the family, and you have your responsibility for that. And I, I like that a lot. Yes. And like, life uh, in general too. I mean, he understands other people out there have disabilities. Some have, some don't. Yes. But we all live our life. We all do our best. Yeah. That, that's a good point to share with a, with a lot of uh, families you know, like facing similar situation. So, George, on the next question I want to um, uh, uh, ask you and then have your thought is, what is your biggest achievement? So I understand, you know, like uh, sometimes we receive some comments about, hey, you know, like having a disability and then how you work through life isn't the biggest achievement. Nonetheless, you know, as a parent, you know, like there must be something that you have done that you're proud of. I'm not saying, you know, that because of the disability, even just without a disability or with a disability, being a parent is not an easy job. So can you share with us uh, what is your biggest achievement in your parenthood? Well, I think we just discussed it really, getting my son to understand that uh, he's not defined by disability. Because I, I don't, he sees it's modeled for him, but I don't, I don't, I'm not defined by disability. Mm-hmm. It's not an excuse. There may be problems. You may have barriers. You may have tendencies that are not what you want to go. But we always have the ability in the brain to sit there and say, "That's difficult. That's the hard way." But what can I do to still get what I've done, what I want to do? It's important yep. to do. Use yeah. your brain. That's what I was teaching. Use your brain. Mm-hmm, see, every mm-hmm. problem has a solution. All you got to do is find it. Yes. To focus on partners. the ability, that, right? Not that, the disability. That's what I, that is, I mean, have, raising a child, he's 13 now, and getting there without without going mad, either one of us going mad, is I think accomplishing itself. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm, that's <laughs> but true. The fact that he's uh, he is an independent thinker when needed, and he reaches out when needed, too. He, he understands where, like we, all, like we all have to, whether you're able-bodied or not, you have to understand where you fit into the into, into society, into mm-hmm. into whatever group you're with, family or society, country, world, you got to figure where do I fit in and how do I accomplish what I need to accomplish? Yes. And sometimes you have to ask yourself, is that a need to accomplish or am I just being told that by someone that wants something from me? Mm-hmm. Yes. I, 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 I title that one, Interpreting Commercials. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this is a very good approach, you know, like it's not only to children with disabilities, but to all children. Right, you know, like that, that we, we should have the same, you know, mindset with that. So now, George, it brings it brings us to our last question. So it's all about yourself. You want, you know, like I want this, you know, coming from how you feel is what would make what would really make your day, you know, right? So we still want to talk about being a parent. So what what would really make your day that make you happy that now I'm so happy that I'm a parent? Uh, tough one. <laughs> I mean, so far, I mean, to me, I don't, I don't kind of look for those wow moments. I'm kind of mm-hmm. like, it's 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 a continuum of progress. Okay. And it's progressing, and I'm happy. I look around, I look at my life, I look at his life, and it's progressing. Where where, where he and I want, and I, and my wife want to see it, and that's mm-hmm. really all we can do. That's all. To me, I don't, I don't like I said, I don't really believe in that whole wow moment. I'm kind of mm-hmm. more about progression, passing these, what people call the wow moment, and keep on going ever more, achieving more. Mm-hmm. And so, so I don't, we don't know his goal yet. He's 13. He has, I didn't have any idea what I was doing in life when I was 13. And he's better, he's doing better than I was at 13, actually. So, mm, yeah. I mean, so I, I want to, you know, as, as we all hope as parents, we hope our children to uh, accept, go beyond what we've been able to do in life. Yes, that's our goal. We we build them up, we teach them, and we want to see the students surpass the teacher. Yes, I don't know if he's going to go academic or not. Uh, he's, he's, he has uh, aptitude for that for learning, and 
and he has interest in the sciences. So uh, he's, I'm just feeding. If we find an interest, when he would discover an interest, he mentions something he's interested in. We provide him materials, books, and reading, and you know, content to uh, explore that. See if it is something he's really interested in, or it's just a momentary like hmm, that looks like interesting. Yes. And moving on, that that will build who you are too. So I don't have a problem with that. We, we get on the we got books, we got books all over the house and stuff that he's read and mm-hmm. looked at. But he still goes back and reads them occasionally because it's interesting. It's yes. Knowledge. That's that's good. So that's you know? where I'm happy with that right now. That's that's my happiness plan with being a parent is that it is progressing according to a uh, plan which is to progress mm-hmm. so generally you are happy as a parent right you know oh, yeah, like, very much. like for the audience you see you know uh, we uh, have uh, conversations uh, dialogues talks with a lot of parents you know that it seems to be a common trend that what really make uh, parents happy is actually you know the happiness in their in, in in their children right in their life what they have achieved so sometimes i would say hey what really make you happy and then it all comes back to actually the happiness of their children yeah, so, i didn't have children for me they're not i mean i don't own i don't own my son <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's just very good and thank you george for sharing your thought and uh, your story with us and no i think that is very um uh I, I wouldn't not say encouraging, but you know, it will be you know uh, would would uh, rouse a lot of mutual feelings with parents. You know, with uh, uh, whether the parenthood associates it with disability or having children with disabilities or not, the family is the most important thing in our life, right? Yes, that's a thank- strong strong core, yeah. Exactly. So thank you, George, for joining us today. And uh, our interview uh, with George uh, has come to an end. I hope you enjoy the uh, conversation and uh, you come back and watch more of our ShareNet videos again on Mondays. Thank you. Bye-bye.